All right, I'm Jim with CyberEcon, and we are driving on with Security Plus. Today we're talking about the man in the browser attack, which is part of Domain 1, which is compare and contrast types of attacks. And this is subdomain or, or topic 1.2 types of attacks, the man in the browser attack, right? So man in the browser is a type of man in the middle attack. And it is especially dangerous because in this attack, unlike things like man in the middle where we do ARP cache poisoning, uh, this attack, the attacker does not have to be on your local network. So that makes it more dangerous because this this one can be carried out from you know, anywhere around the world if they're able to exploit a victim. So we're using the proxy, the attacker's using the proxy in a browser to exploit the victim. This, this proxy within the browser intercepts and manipulates traffic to and from the browser. And once it's in place, it can do anything the user can do. So the attacker can do anything the user can do once this piece of malware is in place. So maybe it's first, first let's look at normal proxy traffic. And, and in a network, sometimes we have a proxy that sits at the edge of our network and it, it redirects folks to the sites that they need to go to. So when, when Alice is gonna try to go to her banking site, she'll send that request to the proxy. Uh, the proxy will then forward it to the bank. The transaction will happen, everything is beautiful. Proxies are good because we can do things like web filtering. Uh, we can protect our users on our networks by making sure that malicious sites can't be gone to. We can make sure we can restrict those sites that are against our policy, like maybe pornographic sites or hate sites, anything that's deemed inappropriate by our organization. The proxy can filter those things out. But it also does things like sites that people go to all the time. So maybe right now people are going to new sites all the time. The proxy can cache some of that content in the local server on the local network so you don't have to go to the internet. So Alice could make me just go to the proxy get her content and it would get back to her much faster because it's on the local network. Uh, in this case, she's going to a banking site. So Alice goes to the proxy and then the proxy forwards her to the banking site. The proxy doesn't have to be in this network diagram. A home user is probably just gonna go from their computer straight to the bank across the internet. So that's normal proxying. And that's what, that technology is what the attacker is going to take and exploit in this type of attack. So in this attack, we've got the same kind of situation, but we've got Hank the Hacker. Again, Hank is the bad dude, and he's created a malicious man in the browser proxy. You see it there, it's really ugly. It's got the bug on it. He's going to try to exploit Alice in some way and get this piece of content onto her computer, right? So maybe it's, maybe it's through a phishing attack, maybe it's through malware, uh, maybe it's a, a Trojan horse attack. Somehow, Hank is going to send this piece of content and have it installed on Alice's computer. Now, when Alice tries to go to her bank or, or really any other site, that content is going to be proxied through a proxy within her browser. So this is a, a proxy within her browser. Now, Hank essentially is inside of her browser, right? So now all those protections that we have that are put in place to protect Alice really don't work anymore because he's part of the system now. So Alice can still do her thing. She can still go to the proxy, but the problem is now Hank is getting all of that traffic too. He is able to see anything that Alice is doing if he wants to. She can go to her bank and, and, and he's going to be able to see all of that. The other thing that, that's important with this attack, and this is what makes it really, really dangerous, is that because she's logged onto her bank now, or any other sites with credentials, Hank can now interact with that banking site. So he can send requests as if he was Alice. So he can send through this proxy, and, and once Alice is logged into the bank, he can say, okay, transfer money. He can do whatever he wants as if he was Alice because it's coming from Alice's browser and Alice is already logged into the banking site. So that traffic will go from the browser that Alice has, uh, maybe to the proxy or maybe straight to the bank. 
um, and then to the bank. So Hank is able to interact with anything in that browser as if he was Alice. So this is a really dangerous tack for one, to be able to do all that stuff, right? So normally a man in the middle can just intercept and change things uh, in line with the, the communication. But in this case, Hank is able to actually interact with the browser once Alice initiates that communication, logs into the bank. So it could be the same thing if she was logging into maybe Gmail, her mail service. And now Hank is able to launch phishing attacks from Alice's Gmail account. So all of Alice's friends maybe would be more likely to open that phishing email if it's coming from Alice. So imagine if Alice was the CEO of a large corporation and Hank was able to get into this email stream, maybe on Gmail, and send email to all the people in that organization from her as the CEO. Probably a lot of those people would open that email. Man in the browser attack is, is very a very dangerous thing, right? It's part of what you need to know for Security Plus. It's part of really what you need to know as a security professional out there. Uh, it's, it's important to know that this is part of the suite of tools that are used for the attacker in the man in the middle type attacks. So it is a type of man in the middle, but it's a man in the browser. Remember, it's, it's important to know that the attacker doesn't have to be on your local network and the attacker can do anything that that user can do with their browser once they're logged in. So as always, I'm Jim with Cyber Recon. Like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified, and I'd love to see some comments below. But until next time, be safe out there and uh, be careful.